Hello everyone. Welcome to my webinar, My Day as a Product Manager in 30 Days. I'm Rakshat and I'm with Amazon. And I'm also a mentor uh, with PM Dojo and I'm doing this with Kanaka Product School today. All right. So the first question to everyone before we start talking is, how was my day with as a PM in Amazon, All right? I would want to talk about how was our day as a PM rather than just talking about Amazon stuff today, right? So the, 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 the biggest question we are trying to answer is how was your day going? For any product managers, right? There are a couple of things what we always struggle with. One, uh, not sure where we start when we open our laptops in the morning because there are thousands of emails, thousands of things and, and lots and lots of customer uh, calls and uh, emails that are sitting in our inboxes. So we absolutely not sure how do we start and how do we prioritize things and how do we handle so many things that are going on. Product managers being the center of the hub and spokes model and everybody is depending on you or waiting on you or, or, or you know, <clears throat> waiting for you to answer many many questions they have or or to set the path or the direction where the entire uh the entire team slash teams want to march towards to make or or to launch a successful product right that's one of them and i'm, I'm really really dealing with the same problem because i was on a vacation for the last week and and coming back yesterday it was completely a mess Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll dive deeper to see how I managed to get through it. The second thing I also want to focus on is how do we strike balance between our uh, customers? I know we have a lot of angry customers. We have happy customers, but at the end of the day, everyone wants the same thing. That is the priority or the importance slash attention, right? Our customers need attention and they want everything to be done yesterday. So how do we go on balancing, uh, the asks that we are getting from our customers how do we keep them happy that's something which we'll also be talking um in in, in next 15 20 minutes the third and most important struggle all of us are face or or which is part of my life or as a product manager is context switching yes there have been times where i have been on two meetings dialing from my phone dialing from my laptop and, and keep listening to uh, both meetings uh, am i being successful in that that's a different um, topic we will discuss later, but or we may not even talk about that. But anyways, coming back uh, to context switching, right? As a product managers, we have to juggle many, many things. There might be questions coming from legal. There might be questions coming from marketing. There might be, uh, you know, the uh, pre-sales uh, documents, what we need to create. We need to create PRDs and then engineering teams might have a lot of questions around the prioritization. So legal might have some require our attention. So how do we switch? How can we be more effective in, in, in switching the context or answering multiple peoples from multiple different domains and that's a bigger headache all of us uh, face and the last topic which i also want to talk or a key takeaway which i also last key takeaway which i also want to talk is what i call it a 60 second strike what is the 60 second strike a problem which never existed 60 seconds before, how did it become a problem and how do we handle it and what do we need to do? So that is something what I call it as 60 second strike because that will strike you hard and you will not have idea just 60 seconds, even 60 seconds before it happens. Okay, so this is what we'll be talking and these are the four different key takeaways which we will be taking away from uh, my, my job as a product manager. Right, sorry um how do i start my day the the first thing i always do is kind of uh, schedule my day where i can have a 15 minutes of kickstart when i say kickstart all i do is open my outlook uh scan through my emails which have been um uh, come like you know from from previous evening all the way till the morning yes i know overnight there could be a lot of customers across the globe time differences and also there are a lot of colleagues and peers who would love to respond to your emails maybe in the night or or because everyone has their own schedules right so that's where I, I i start off with scanning through my emails remember i'm not gonna answer them until i know what everything is 
Uh, so I just scan through and see which one kind of stands out, which one is an emergency or which one really, really needs my attention. Then scan through my pings and scan through my scan through my calendar to get a good idea of what meetings uh, are there on my calendar what is that i need to go to where i need to be and whom i need to respond to either in slack or teams or chimes or any of those things so this is exactly uh, what uh, i will be doing in these 15 minutes so this will give me a very good idea on how i set my day and once that is done the output of that is as the next point where i say i'm gonna define my day saying hey i'm gonna invest you know half of my day on this particular product i'm gonna do other half in writing this particular document and then these are the different things what i will be achieving today so it's kind of like you know, if, if there are five to 10 bullet points that are come out of, of my 15 minutes kickstart, maybe I have only time for five of them. So I'm going to say these are the five different things what I will be achieving, which are the topmost priority. Right. And then one other uh, thing is, is that product managers always have ad hoc requests coming from different folks, right? So how do we do that? So one thing you always need to remember is constant prioritizations between the existing and the new items that come up. So basically, it's it's going to be a queue. So what I do is if there is a new item, I kind of, uh, you know, compare it against the existing one, see if that's the top priority. If it's not the top priority, then I'm going to respond and say back, hey, I might not have bandwidth to get to it. This could be delayed or can this be waiting so basically any anything basically i prioritize let the folks know that this this is something which i'll not be able to get to or let the team know that uh, i'll not be able to get to this and still continue with the existing ones in case of that's the one the new items the top priority of course you drop everything and pick that up depending on the on the emergency of that meeting now the other one, like we also scanned, the calendar has one of the biggest pain points for all the product managers. At least my entire day is double booked, sometimes even triple booked, right? With different meetings. So what I do is I just I just go through my meetings and and I skip where I, I feel I do not add any value or maybe I feel that I'm not required there right so always feel free to skip meetings but if you skip your meeting and if you think that you are not going to add value let the let the host know that you will not be joining or uh, the simple rule of thumb is i i always color code my meetings like red is a must go blue is something uh, nice to go and gray is something i can completely skip uh kind of a scenario but but it the choice of colors are left to you right and uh the other thing also, it's it's more like the must go meetings are some of those meetings where the meetings cannot get started without you or the decisions cannot be made without you. So those are the must go meetings is how I define my meetings as. So that's something which everybody needs to uh, understand. But sometimes, yeah, I end up being into meetings. So I'm still learning. Then the, the, the next point is basically all of these things you need to clearly identify which of these need attention. It's, it's like, you know, you have three kids and, and you know, you need to identify which kid needs the most attention. So you pick that kid, give your attention, pay your dues and you're out of there. So that's exactly, uh, what I would do. That's how I, I plan my day and an easier way to do it is I have lots of to do notes. I just keep scribbling, taking and pushing things around. So this is how I start my day and, and plan my day. So a couple of takeaways from here is feel free to skip meetings where you don't add value. Let the folks know that you will not be joining and then try and plan things prioritize what needs to be done try and push if if something if overflowing try and push which are not important right amidst all of this don't forget to care for yourself if you're tired just you know take a break take a five minutes break go for a walk grab a cup of coffee but at the end of the day self-care is very very important i and i pay a lot of attention for that right so that's uh, about it um that's how my day starts stakeholder communication right 
uh, like we were talking, there are always angry customers, there are happy customers. It's not just the customers. As a product manager, you deal with cross team, cross functional teams. It could be legal, marketing, engineering, any one of them. So what do we do? Number one, I always follow this uh, principle of over communicating. That's fine if you're spamming a couple of folks, but it's also important that they know what you need to be said. And a couple of times I've been in scenarios where I've communicated once, folks have forgotten and, and that kind of become a, a problem or escalation later. So I always uh, suggest my mentees and all the folks as a product manager is to over communicate. It's, it's, Sometimes, you know, you feel, oh, I just sent an email yesterday, but there is an event happening today. Maybe be, be subtle. Say, hey, a gentle reminder about this event. Or just say, don't forget to join us. Whatever it is, right? So over communication is really, really good. And it also helps a lot of stakeholders to understand what is happening. It drives transparency. And it, it also helps you gain trust with your stakeholders because they feel uh, involved. If you don't communicate, they always feel that, oh, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening. I don't know when these things changed because there are lots of things. And, and usually PMs communicate with executives. They have multiple things going on. So over communication is, is really good. Right. So that's what I do. And the, the other thing is whenever you talk to a customers, my go to, uh, my, my safe place is that I start empathizing with them. So that way, you know, if there's a customer is angry, not satisfied, or or even if it's an internal customer, they're really, really not happy with your product, they come back to you, or if you're missing a deadline, or if the requirements are changing, you just sit there, listen for 20 minutes, let them let them cry, let them crib, let, let, let them do whatever they need to say. You sit there, empathize, and just say, oh, yes, I understand. Okay, I hear you that gives a good comfortable feeling for your customers at least at some point in time all you need to do is sit there and listen to them so they get a good feeling about okay there is someone who can listen to me who is listening to me so that is exactly you need to do sit there empathize completely hear out and then maybe start adding your thoughts and say oh maybe this could be done this way this can be done this way or oh you know what you know we are delayed i know but but we are we are giving you xyz which can offset abc but but definitely we'll be rolling out a couple of other changes so the the best tip i've got so far and has really really worked for me is to sit there empathize that will that will give more comfort to your customers and then trust me whatever point you're trying to make it'll, it'll make you much easier and it'll be much faster all right that's something i have always been followed uh throughout my uh, my career as a product manager then the other one is as a product manager you need to be very very proactive than being a reactive person so let's say you you have a marketing event which is coming up and you do not want to wait for the marketing team to come back and say oh can you give me the gtm or can you uh prep for a presentation or let's say you know in, in a stakeholder communication maybe you are kind of delaying or you have seen an, a risk in your timelines or or you are seeing some legal issues that might pop up so it says that you can just go be very subtle dear customer hey hope you're doing good um we are working towards this we are trying to get uh get to the finish line but there could be some minor xyz issues what i'm foreseeing but nothing is concrete yet but the team is completely working on in case something changes i'll keep you posted about it it's all about being proactive and uh you know keeping them warm so that's what i always do if some there is something which which i foresee uh i i kind of communicate but at the end of the day i i wait until i have some solid information to make sure that it is the right foresee what i'm doing right again we don't really need to uh, create false alarms that's a very very um fine line between uh you know being proactive and raising false alarms so make sure that you know whenever you see the risk you spend time have that understanding of what why is this happening what 
what is it happening and how is it happening and what can be done and what are the different um solutions that could be possible and and kind of a scenario just have a good understanding learn about the situation learn about the risk what you're looking at and then give a subtle uh, proactive communication to your stakeholders so that way you know they even might start empathizing you and you will start gaining their trust as a uh, gaining their trust as well so that's something i would say then <clears throat> as a product manager your customers would look for the recommendations than open big questions because this has been really working for me of late rather than saying oh hey here is the thing uh i have a risk or or maybe the product is delayed what do you want to do i know that you have uh planned an event across rather than you go and tell hey you know what this the product launch has been delayed, but I have five features out of five. There are three. How, how about we, you know, a demo three or we go to a customer with those three features and then we will be doing the rest two in a week or in a month or whatever it is. Right. Uh, even for, that's one of the examples. Let's say for the sales, instead of saying, hey, a new product is coming. What do you want to do? How do you want to launch and stuff <clears throat> or do the sales event? Maybe you can go back and say, hey, you know what? There is a, a new product what I'm launching. How about let's let's host some praise sales event how about we do a <clears throat> sorry we do some road shows uh, kind of a scenario so every time our recommendation is what customers are like off late the new generation or, or off late the customers are are um customers want to hear what uh they like to know what to be done rather than giving them the options of saying okay this is what it is and they figuring out a solution to it so I would prefer recommendations or open open ended questions, and this has actually uh, paid off really well. Even with the executives in my company, that has really helped me a lot. And rather than going them with a problem, I go with the recommendation saying, "Hey, this is the problem. Maybe we should do X, Y, Z, and that that would help us um, solve this scenario, or this would do some damage control kind of a scenario." And and it, it, it's pretty much easy for them. They don't have to think; they just need to act. So that would really help and that has helped me a lot, right? And then as a product manager, you know, when you sit down with your stakeholders, have some communications, it could be your engineering, it could be your sales, marketing, customers, legal, PR, whatever it is, be ready to disagree and commit. Yes, this is an Amazon term. I know <clears throat> one of the leadership principles, like like you might have already uh, guessed it out. But anyways, the 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 meaning of disagree and commit here is that yes you you kind of disagree with what they say but you are still willing to commit because your customer might have more information your your senior management might have more information at some point in time uh you know you need to, when you disagree you do definitely need to give them the solid reasons on why you disagree with it and that kind of completes the principle what amazon says disagree uh, sorry have a backbone disagree and commit right so that is where the next point what we're talking about is the data driven communications that's really important let's say there is a proposal uh, what your customer is saying and you want to disagree then you need to list out why do you think that you disagree with these things maybe what the way you're thinking uh the customer might have already thought and that could not be their problem they're trying to solve something else in that case we have a bigger problem that you don't have a good understanding but anyways the idea here is be patient listen understand what the customer is trying to say or what your stakeholder is trying to say and then if you think that's the right thing to do you you be open-minded to disagree saying okay i might not agree with you but it, it seems like the way uh forward maybe i will come out and let's let's go in that direction so that it will it will really help towards uh the greater good but back every time back your communications with the data data say for example you're sending out an email to your customers rather than say oh it's really good oh we are doing really great oh we are on track maybe you can explain a little more you can say that hey out of 10 features we are already uh we have launched or we have deployed eight features to to go it's coming up in the next two weeks and then you might be able to do some demo blah 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 so always go with the data so data is everything and and it helps you it, it helps you convince a lot of folks 
it, it it's a good way to paint the picture of facts and it's also easier for the audience to understand what you're talking about all right that's uh the data driven communication right context switching what do I do in the, in the in the mode of context switching? The context switching, the first thing what I do is delegate. Right? I I if I want if 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 there are too many things on my plate, don't feel shy to delegate. Ask for help. Go to your peer and say, hey, I don't have bandwidth to do this. Do you will you be able to help me out? You know, go go out, let your manager know, hey, maybe I'm not I'm, I'm I I am not able to do this. So will you please help me out or can can one of your teammates pick it up so start delegating things you're not the sole person um you know holding everything together of course you are but but ask for help when required the second thing uh feel free to say no right there are three things you're already dealing with you don't want one more thing in case if you think that you're not able to do it just say no there is no no magical number which says you have to do three things at a time you have to do just one thing at a time it really depends on individual individual capabilities or it, it also depends on how comfortable that person is with um with the product what they're leading it. there are a lot of times where i do three things four things at a time but but i know if, if i'm dealing with the product that i'm comfortable with if if i'm starting to if i'm starting to work on a new product maybe i will have my hundred person focus on that because that's the new place it's a new learning kind of a scenario so it's completely uh left to the individual uh, uh choices so feel free to say you no know. the other way to deal with the context switching is to set reminders focus on one thing maybe spend first two hours on one particular thing so get uh get through get to the next one uh that's more like a sequential uh, way of doing things but again slicing and doing things if you want to do things really in parallel then maybe uh you know you can set reminders you can write notes that's how i do and then sometimes you also tell your peers that hey you know what Maybe can you just help me understand or can we recall the last five minutes or can you please bring me up to speed? Can you just help me recollect a couple of things? Feel free to uh, just ask them so that you kind of recollect what you were doing before while you're coming back to this and then you can uh, start running. All right. And then I call this as a dynamic to do list. Keep keep uh juggling between the items uh what you need to do up and down prioritize deprioritize and see what is really really important for that day because you don't really need to spend your time on doing things which are not required for today or tomorrow or even day after tomorrow uh rather focus on the things that really really um need your attention right now Right. The biggest thing, what happens when the context switching when folks come back, come to you and say, Hey, you know what? This is what uh, I'm working on. This is really, really important to me. Can you please get to it? At some point in time, there is a lot of emotions that go into these kind of asks that are coming in. And, and, and when, when, when there is a thing which is really, really critical, you feel there is a lot of emotions that go into it. So all you need to do is take a step back, you know, kick the emotions out and then think logically. Uh, maybe you can just hear out the person. Okay. I understand. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th then make them feel comfortable and then go back and ask, Hey, again, okay, why do you think this is important? What is that? What happens if we don't do this? Go back and analyze and, and leave the emotions out of it. Be more logical. Uh, at least when I do that, for me, 70% of the, you know, time critical scenarios have kind of, drop down when when we do these emotions out you know there is there is an issue that has popped up and, and folks are going uh full gaga over it then you you go back and say hey what's happening okay i know there is an event coming up and 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 or, or there is a launch coming up i know this issue has popped up okay let's take a, um, a step back let's understand why it came how did it come what is that gonna happen if we don't fix this right so half the times or more than 50 percent of the times it's the emotion that kind of make things very time sensitive or critical rather than actually they are so kick the emotions out and think illogical so that will really really help you and reduce multiple things in the context for context switching as well so this is something what i always do and yes, I also keep switching context. And uh, I think that's one skill every product manager needs to have. 
I know it's it's not the not the best thing you want to hear, but that's the fact. Okay, sixty second strike. This is something which I I really like about it. It it makes you more dynamic and it makes you more challenging. The the word like I explained before, the sixty second strike is a problem which never existed 60 seconds back which means that it's a brand new problem that's coming your way when you say problem always or on slash issue we should always think about okay what is it is this really a problem or is this an issue which we need to focus about is this really really an issue or a problem right with the codes so all you need to do is okay just calm down take a step back and analyze what the problem is what is the root cause for it what is it? You know, just just calm down, think for two minutes, take take a deep breath, and start thinking about it. Then you will be able to say whether this problem is actually a problem or not a problem, or it could be a problem, but does that need to be dealt right now? Kind of a scenario. So first, define the problem. This will, for me, this has solved seventy percent of the time. The problem will go away at this stage, right? And if it's not a problem that needs to be dealt right this minute, then I'm happy to push it out, focus on the important things, and then always uh, be happy to uh, revisit and, and see what needs to be done, right? So it, it this this logic kind of kicks out 70% of the problems or, or the 60 second strikes that, that, that 60 second strikes that are gonna come your way. Uh, then you need to do is damage control. That's the next step of the 60 second strike. Go back and, and communicate to all your stakeholders and say, Hey, this is what has happened. This popped up 60 seconds back when we didn't know about it. Let's see the teams are working on. I keep you posted on how it goes, but just wanted to keep you all in the loop. So that is, that is the first thing you need to do. And that's going to solve a lot of problems. And that will help you to set the right expectations. Now your stakeholders are aware of it. Then you can go back and say, oh, this is what, this is what. This could be delayed. Maybe it's not delayed. It's not a P0. And, and other, uh, you know, out of the rest remaining 30%, another 15% problems will de-escalate when, when you have that conversation with your stakeholders and they might say, oh, okay, that's fine. Even though the launch is there, this is not a launch blocker. Maybe we don't need that right away. So that kind of helps you as well. Once you, you have this damage control, don't worry, just get into the planning phase, trim all the fat, trim all the unnecessary things, you know, trim all the P1s and P2s. Just focus on the issue, what, whatever is P0 for that particular issue. Focus on what is that quick hack if, if that's required. But is that the right thing to do? I wouldn't recommend. But is, is that what the customer in the business wants? Then you need to be smart enough to make that decision. Maybe a quick, a uh, quick hack long term solution short short term solution and then focus only on what is needed for that moment and then rest of the add ons can come in in the next phases so don't don't feel, don't be scared to go back to the whiteboard do the thing once again and see where it lands right and then involve the right folks that are required to solve this problem the next one i would suggest as i always do is hold people accountable and responsible so let's say you know you need there is an issue that needs to be fixed or there is a problem that needs to be fixed and then you have you know folks from different uh, functional teams marketing legal whatever uh, development or or it could be sometimes your customers or whatever hold them accountable let them know that hey look this is the problem this is what we need this is the expectations this is the timeline so hold them accountable if something is not working go back to them have that conversation see how you can offer help to that yes and and make them feel responsible that oh okay we are really responsible for this this is what it is right so at the end of the day you are a leader where you need to lead people either from the front or back it doesn't matter but at the end of the day make sure that they feel accountable and responsible for what it is that's something I would say. And the last one is define the right success criteria. If you don't define them, then you don't know what you're going towards, or you don't know if the problem is solved or not. What how do you measure success? What is that? Either it could be your KPIs or it could be your ABC items that is called your success criteria, whatever it is. But define them, define them uh, and have an agreement across all the stakeholders. So that is how you deal, I, I deal with a 60 second strike and maybe you can give it a try with, with these things, right? 
and then uh, getting to the next one is the 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 turn off product tea and turn on personal tea. This is this is one of the most spoken or talked topic across these days, given the pandemic and all of us are working from home. So a couple of things what I do to turn off my uh, you know product P and turn on my personal P is asking myself every time, you know, once once at the end of the day something comes up, then my first question is, can this wait till tomorrow? If no, why? So that is where the why needs to be stronger and it needs to be important than your personal life or it needs to be really, really critical, sensitive and, and time critical. Again, don't involve emotions in, in answering these why, right? So that's what I do. I'll see, can this wait till tomorrow? If yes, then I'm not going to pick it up, right? Uh, that's one way. The other way is I usually don't answer or things after work hours when I say, okay, I'm done, I'm done. You know, so be comfortable not answering them in case if there is something really, really critical, like like, let's say GCP is going down, AWS is completely down, then folks will chase you irrespective wherever you are, whether your laptop is closed, your phone is off, whatever it is, uh, people will chase you and um, they will they will reach out to you so feel free not to respond to pings after uh, office hours the other good thing what i have done at work is i keep sharing my family stories like you know i don't have kids of course but i, I share my travel stories i i share my um parents are here so i share those stories with them where we took them for vacation where me and my my wife and i were traveling on all of those things so the peers know that you have a family too there are two, multiple advantages so one it kind of creates a very good healthy environment when you start sharing those stories and second people will start respecting your time spent oh he has family he has things to take care of and it kind of constantly reminds them that okay um he works in his different schedule he has other things to take care of let's only bother him if it's really really required right so i always have this line in my email which says my hours are my hours your hours are your you are hours please feel free to respond when you can just because i'm sending an email um you know late in the night doesn't mean that the other person needs to respond or compile to respond so it's just a way of making sure folks feel um you know, we value their personal life and uh, you also, if once you start doing it, you also will start getting it back. So maybe I think if, if you feel that there is no work-life balance, maybe that could be the first step you can take and, and then rest of the team will definitely follow you. So yeah, so that's something which I, I kind of uh, tell my mentees as well to share their personal stories, which are shareable with, with the colleagues and stuff right and then always have a shutdown ritual I, I always do that if i'm shutting down for the day like closing my laptop or any of those things i kind of plan okay what are what what are my items on the list for tomorrow how do i uh, plan for them so just you know that's a wind up uh ritual and i always make sure that i plan my personal activities right after my work let's say you want to do a dog walking or you have a yoga class or you have a massage therapy or whatever it is schedule it right off the work so that kind of forces you to uh you know close on time i mean it, it, it so that way you don't your your office work don't creep into your um creep up into your personal life so uh um, whatever it is if you're if you're having uh you know a play play time with your kids or whatever it is maybe just schedule right after the work so it kind of forces you to stop on the dot and you can you can let your uh, teams know that hey or on your meeting if your meeting is running over you can say hey i have a hard stop i need to go i need to take my dog to work i need to go attend my yoga class i need to go pick up my kids whatever it is so that's some some of the ways what i try to uh work around so that i could turn off my product p and turn on my personal p so that's uh pretty much how i do and uh there are multiple ways these are not only the ways pick anything that works for you but if you really like these maybe you can you can follow these ethics as well right and then finally questions if you have any questions uh, please uh, send an email uh, to me happy to answer you can find me on linkedin my by my first name feel free to ping me and, and happy to connect with you thank you everyone